Hello, and another episode of my Rotest version 9 build. Probably the last item that was open, literally open, the socket box receiver. In all the my previous videos, it was open because I was waiting for, for the PCBs, for the panel PCBs to arrive from GLC PCB. Received everything. Here you can see the base PCB with all the uh, ferrite beads and the dumping resistors, side panels, back panel, yes, yeah, empty panel, side panel again, and the top panel. The top panel is a little bit more complicated <laughs> because uh, I added some electronics here, some, some monitoring, uh, safety monitoring, because uh, when you use external pins 9 and 10 for the anodes or for external uh, screens of the, of the tubes, um, there is no indication that uh, voltage is present. And because of the, the fact that all the relays inside, none of them is not even near uh, specified or certified for more than 250 volts or something. And we are switching here 600, up to 600 volts at the moment. Um, I feel better if I make, uh, that I could do a, a, some indication. If in, for any reasons, for some, some catastrophic reason, a relay gets stuck, the contacts get stuck, a driver dies and gets stuck, etc, etc. The worst thing could be is that there is a voltage present on pin 9 or 10. Yeah, and I don't know it. Bad things can happen. So anyway, I, I added this monitoring and the monitoring is quite... Um, Quite a lot of work was gone, has been done to, for security. For, first of all, I didn't want it to load the anodes additionally, just to show uh, a green or LED LED. I'm using here high voltage resistors that are specified for 3700 VR37 from Vichy. That's 33 max. And that's the upper leg of the voltage divider with the lower leg, the 1206, 160 kilo ohms at, I don't know, at, I think at a thousand volts I calculated or simulated, it draws maximum seven microamps, so nothing. I made all the calibration with the top cover because I had to make it, make it again because I changed the, the firmware, I updated the firmware. I received a new microcontroller from, from Helmut. So I had to do all the calibration again because all the ADCs are on the microcontroller itself, the 12-bit 12, uh, 12 ADCs. Uh, as you can see, there are some power lines here. These are, first of all, just for not a specific reason. I don't know what will, perhaps I would need it in the, in the, in the future. This one, opa, this one here is the relay, the unregulated relay voltage. Didn't use it yet, but it's here in case I, I, I need it. But because I didn't want it to use any, any voltage that is generated from the main board of the Rotus itself uh, for the monitoring and for uh, uh, for outputting to the to the to the socket boxes because for the socket boxes I would need probably a DC DC for any for some other uh, tubes for example Nixi or for a, a fan for the 4CX 250 or something. As I showed in my previous video, I added a power supply for that, that is dedicated only for the boxes itself and for the monitoring. This is the, this line here. 
So it is powered through this GST connector, 12 volts. There's a high voltage GST connector that goes to the pins 9 and 10 respectively. Voltage divider, over voltage TVS protection, the comparator, power supply for 5 volts, and a lot of additional circuitry that makes sure that if something happens, the maximum current that can be go to the to this circuit is 17 microamps, microamps, not more. Yeah? And nothing here inside of the ray test. So, and this is how it looks closed. Everything is closed now, finally. Here you see the status of the two external pins, 9 and 10. Green when it's safe and red if any of any of those two goes above 30 volts. Like explained, it's explained here. Nice logo. Here I will show how it works. I just took an EL519 to show you, connected to the uh, to the external pin 10 for the anode. So. Okay, uh, the first few seconds there were a problem because <laughs> human error of course, yeah. I had set a PL519 and I inserted the EL519. So I had the overcurrent condition. Anyway, let's try to test it. Heater. And now, you see, the anode is over 30 volts. It's shown clearly. So no touching, no touching, no nothing. Careful. And when the whole measurement is finished and all the relays are turned off, should be green again. So why I wanted uh, to have it in green and not just on or off? Yeah, because if something again catastrophic happens and there is no power supply or, or no power rail for the electronics of, the, of this monitor and I have only on or off, so dark or red, I'm not seeing it. So just to be sure, Green is always present and red is means that the voltage on the connector is not safe. So soon it has to finish. Yeah, it takes a while. The current is still rising. Zack, that's it. And we are green again. So, now I'm more, I have more, I'm more secure just to touch this thing. I know that there is no high voltage present. Just a small show off of my socket boxes I have till now. One that is a multiple one with a Magnoval. Magnoval, Octal, Novel, and Mini P uh, P7 with external anode and external pin 9 for whatever it's used, if it's used. A scepter for 5894, 828, 29, etc. And an interesting one, more, more will come. That's a uh, uh, World War II German military uh, tube or socket, for example, for the RL-12P35. 
here. Additionally, I have my, my uh, calibration box with the resistors inside. I showed that before, but just so you can see what is made till now. And for the end, I will show how this, how an, this RL 12 P35 from, I don't know, 44, 1944 can be tested. I put it in the socket, it's a bayonet, check. Not going to use the external grid, but only the anode. It's made a little bit darker, you can see it better. So let's let's load the the data of the tube itself. Let's make a quick test. Anode has voltage and what voltage? Look, 600 volts. Yeah, so it's not very healthy to touch it. I prefer to see that we have a little voltage there on the anode at the moment present. Soon the current the current has to rise. It starts already to rise. Yum. Anode current, the maximum should be for 100%, should be 50 milliamps. And we will not make it. This, this tube is 70 years old, more than 70 years old. So it will be something, I don't know, 60, 70% okay, probably. Or even less. Or even less. This tube takes some time to warm correctly up, but now the current goes up. We are already at 50% almost. 46%, 48, 49, 50. It will be, all, I think this one has over 60% or something. Six hundred volts heater. We are at sixty one percent, and yeah, I think it would not go very high anymore. Mm. It's still rising, right? 65%, nice number, good vintage, 1965. Oh, now it stopped, two, three, uh, it's still rising. Okay, now it's finished, 70% probably. For a tube of that age, 1944, with 70%, it's okay. So, just wanted to show the finished version of the retest with the covers mounted with the monitor, high voltage monitoring on the external pins activated and the test of a, a fancy German Army World War II tube. That's for today guys, bye.